Code 2040 has been working for years to help improve employment opportunities for the black and brown communities and surface some of this amazing talent that hadn't been making it to Silicon Valley. So curious as a person who runs this organization, how you've been experiencing the last few weeks as the momentum behind the Black Lives Movement has um, has picked up. And now you're seeing all of these major brands taking a stand against Facebook for how they handle hate and address minority communities on their platform. Yeah. Um, well, I think it's kind of twofold, right? Like one, there's a lot of excitement um, or threefold. Like when there's a lot of excitement around seeing this pick up again and, and seeing forward movement. And with that, just tremendous gratitude for all the Black Lives Matter activists that are out in local communities making this and the pain of Black communities, but also Black and Latinx communities, something that people cannot ignore, right? And so I feel tremendous gratitude for that. Um, and I think there's a lot of grief also, like understanding the level of pain and death we had to see on our TV screens in order for this to get the attention that it is getting right now. Um, and, and the third, I would say, is like a little bit of a feeling of Groundhog's Day, right? This is, uh, while this is more national in scope, um, a lot of the way that the tech industry in particular is operating is reminiscent of what happened in 2014 when Google released its data. And there was a lot of forward momentum around this that honestly just capsized when the new administration came in and everyone went into their corners hiding from a president with an itchy Twitter finger. I love that word capsize. That so perfectly encapsulates uh, what has happened. Then there was the Me Too, Me Too movement and a sort of reckoning mm -hmm. then around gender. Um, you know, if you think it's Groundhog Day, do you believe then that we are going to drift back to the way things were uh, once these conversations sort of peter out? Or do you feel like now is the beginning of a moment when we'll start to see real change? Yeah. In the organization, we have an organizational value around multiple truths, and I find it very important in moments like this. I think it is absolutely possible that things go back to the way they were, right? And because of that, I just want to keep encouraging the consistent pressure that our communities are putting on companies to really look at what we have been saying for the last God only knows how many years. I have seen much more change in the last two to three weeks than I think I've seen in, I don't know, at least 10 years. And that to me seems very promising. And moving from what is and what has been um, like some important but ultimately cosmetic um moves to structural changes within companies that mean we never even get to this place again is going to take a lot of work and a lot of pressure to keep the momentum going. That might be the most hopeful thing I've heard yet. And I am <laughs> more optimistic now that you uh, are, are, I hear that you are more optimistic Facebook is a huge employer, and I know a lot of Code 2040 work uh, folks end up working at Facebook. And you know, at this time, where where you know Mark Zuckerberg has taken the stand that he, that he has taken in terms of how to moderate speech and not moderate political speech, um, you know, what's your take on that? Can you separate the yeah. two, or not? No. Um, I do not believe you can separate the two. Um, you create the conditions under which people show up to work every single day. And if endangering Black life and endangering like immigrant life, endangering like women is something that you are comfortable with being on your platform, it is not a very tough extension for that to be what happens internally in your company, right? And I think uh, I've heard from many people <laughs> about how difficult it is to show up for that, right? And I think you're starting to see a lot of workforces push back on that as well, right? Like we've seen a lot of, whether it is Facebook or Google, and I just want to be clear that like Zuckerberg is the one of the more dangerous examples, but is 
far from a singular example of a company in the Valley that allows that kind of discrimination to metastasize within its doors. Mm. And, now, a do and a global digital on, marketplace. In another, right. Now, in another development, President Trump has temporarily halted new worker visas. And obviously, the immigrant community is, is a huge asset in, in Silicon Valley. So many uh, companies here rely on, um, rely on, on immigrant workers. How big a deal is this? It's a really big deal. Um, I think, the, to be clear, the administration's only po guiding policy is white hegemony. Like, that's it, right? And that leaves us as a country less competitive in a globalized world. Currently, there are 700,000 open tech jobs in the country. We only graduate 56,000 people with computer science degrees each year and 24,000 people out of boot camps. Even when you add the 65,000 people that are, or the 85,000 people that are coming in with H-1Bs, that's still just 165,000 workers, right? And every time right. you do not have people to fill open roles, the work that you're doing is slower. So the amount of work that you could open up for more people is slower, right? And America okay. needs national labor policy that helps us, right? There are currently 34 million boomers who are retired and 10,000 of them retiring every single day. The last boomers will retire, will right. be 65 in, the, in, 19, in uh, 2030. Like we don't have a single unified strategy for how we are going to operate around this. And the same people that are counter H-1B visa are counter a diversified workforce, right? And we have to really live with that. Right.